Welcome back everyone. I'm not sure why I'm so goddamn excited about this. Uh, I'm really not. <laughs> and it is cool, but uh, yeah, it's Pax Britannica, as you probably have realized by now. So this is a mod that really was released, uh, I believe, a couple of days before. It was released on Fri uh, yeah, Friday and now it's Sunday, so yeah, a couple of days before the recording of this video. It is a pretty cool mod. Uh, all things considered. Now, this mod has a long and troubled history, which uh, actually I'm not the biggest expert on. I used to remember seeing a couple of screenshots uh, of, I believe, its first iteration. As far as I know, this is the third one, where uh, basically um, it was being developed and, you know, through reasons, it had to be completely redesigned. Goddamn, how, how cool. How cool, how actually incredibly cool though, is this menu? Like the artwork here is fantastic, but whatever. Basically, yeah, I got uh, sort of canceled and completely redone twice, I believe. Uh, so this is the third iteration of Pax Britannica. It was originating, originated as like uh, Britain conquered the world. Uh, alternate history mod, but like, of course, the British Empire is falling apart in the 1930s. I believe that's how it began, at, at least how the teasers um, made it seem. But uh, it, is, it seems that now it's gone in a completely different direction, and it's actually a relatively interesting one. Uh, unfortunately, this is very much an, a super, almost kind of like an alpha teaser version, really, because... As you can see from the top left over here, we've got the Foundation Release 1.0, A Time of Monsters. Um, and uh, the content is only present for three countries, that is Britain, France, and Germany. And that is obviously, you know, not ideal, um, to say the least. Uh, these, these are pretty big trees, quite a lot of content, but um, I should also preface by, this by saying that I have not played the mod, so I have not played the playthrough. I do not know exactly how well this works uh, in actual gameplay, but uh, I'm just here to sort of give a very quick overview of everything. And to be completely honest, considering the uh, lack of content for a lot of countries, I feel like I'm not really even too much in the mood to even try this out. I'm gonna be waiting until more countries uh, get content. But essentially, yes, free countries, let's dive right in. Um, because the scenario itself is actually incredibly interesting because it's gone from not just a, uh, not just an alternate history mod, but hear the sounds, right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to hear the, the sound effects. It's gone from not just a sort of regular alternate history mod uh, into a kind of wider alternate universe in which the development of technology was very different, as you saw from the beginning um, with the kind of Iron Harvest style uh, diesel punk kind of Great War mech type of machine. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna check that out. Let me check the music level. It's actually even a bit too, uh, a bit too low. Give me extra juice on that music. All right. Um, so Imperial Britain, obviously mod is called Pax Britannica for a reason. Uh, this scenario is supposed to basically, um, be a uh, British dominated world uh, in which basically the United States of America uh, never became independent and is instead a uh, sort of uh, British subsidiary commonwealth. Um, plus the British sort of took over a bunch of areas of the world and you know, just like in real life. But uh, yeah, basically the fact that the United States never emerged plus things in Europe went different differently plus weird technological developments have sure, sort of ushered in a long period of dominance for the British Empire. Um, and as you can see, when you start the game, it gives you a nice list of... I do not want to disable to super events audio. 
uh, because I will probably not even be unpausing. As you can see, when you start the game, you get a nice little sort of briefing. Uh, I really love when mods do this and they, they dump just a bunch of, because uh, it used to be that mods would just give you like a bunch of events at the start with like a million things to read. But like, I like it when they, they give you the lore and these like nice digestible little, um, nice digestible little, you know, read ups that you can just push and push a button and then bring up. So basically uh, there was a great war sometime in the 1910s, I believe. Um, and Britain and Germany ganged up on France uh, and a couple other European countries, like I believe Italy as well. Um, and uh, basically Britain, Germany, Russia versus Italy, France, Spain, a bunch of other whatever the fuck countries. And um, yeah, basically uh, we have that. Uh, actually, it looks like uh, Russia was against Germany, perhaps. Because I used to remember, yeah, whatever. Uh, I maybe read something wrong in, in a lore write up somewhere. Uh, but basically, uh, Germany and the UK won the war. However, uh, this is kind of an unstable arrangement as Germany won much more decisively. Um, like, the G Germany won the sort of peace settlement more than the British, and so the British are feeling threatened by the rise of Germany. And of course, the sort of victory over France, uh, which actually used to be much bigger, um, uh, much bigger before the Great War, it used to be like kind of like almost Napoleonic Empire type of deal. Um, except not under the not under the Bonapartes, under the Bourbons. We'll get to that when we talk about France. Um, the French dismantlement uh, sort of led to the rise of sort of ultranationalism in France. Blah 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 blah. You know the the, the usual stuff like uh huh. Look, it's uh, you know the the new kind of fashy boys. Um, yeah, just as, as you'd expect. So obviously. Um, what makes Britain really truly powerful is its gigantic uh, imperial commonwealth that is spread all over the world that you can see right here. Let's use the factions map mode to uh, show you exactly what we're talking about, the imperial powers. Um, and in fact, um, since since uh, there's a big chunk of India that's not in it, actually, like, Britain is not even that big to be completely honest but the imperial powers does include very importantly the united commonwealth of course um and a bunch of uh, africa now germany also has is like the second big colonial power now france doesn't really have any colonies left all its colonies were sort of uh taken away by the germans and the british after the great war uh and in fact there's a lot of places that are in the lore colonized by the french um, for longer than they were in our timeline or f just that they were never colonized by the French at all in our timeline. And so there's like a kind of French presence still there. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, Algeria is really... Yeah, I don't think Algeria is really that well developed around here, but basically that's the gist of it. Uh, however, what is like really unique in my opinion that sets this mod apart from others and like really kind of makes me look forward to new releases that add content to more countries is the fact that uh, it's not just sort of the, um, you know, uh, the development of states and political thought and, you know, um, international conflicts that is different about this scenario. It is also the development of technology, which is really cool because in this world, you have that basically the sort of big revolution uh, away from coal uh, is not just oil, but also like a kind of like weird ass kind of sci-fi um, kind of Tesla fucking, you know, with the Tesla nonsense. So basically, um, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories even about this. So basically, Nikola Tesla was this scientist from the this region every single country around here says that it was he he was their fucking the, the the son of their fatherland or whatever the fuck um who basically was instrumental in developing uh alternating current 
electricity and a bunch of, you know, a bunch of technologies regarding basically electrical power generation. And there's a bunch of woo-woo uh, sort of speculation about uh, some of his projects, um, including that perhaps uh, he discovered some kind of like uh, almost unlimited energy uh, generating device or whatever the fuck, blah, 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 nonsense. A uh, bunch of conspiracy theories about that uh, in real life. You can go look them up. It's really interesting. However, in this timeline, he actually did discover like a weird ass power source. Um, and so this has sort of uh, like led to a bunch of weird ass developments uh, that are kind of sci-fi seen from the world of the 1920s, right? So it's kind of the, the word, I think that the correct word is diesel punk. Um, kind of reminds me of like the, the worlds of like Bioshock, for instance, uh, or Iron Harvest as, uh, as well, where you have these like kind of weird mechanical uh, machines plus, um, plus basically strange like flying machines, like teleforce engines and whatever the fuck. Um, and what's really kind of funny in a way is that also they've included like things like from um, from Wonder Waffles, <laughs> like Hitler's secret weapons, like the fucking UFO like thing. Because technically in this universe, like there's there's just like weird anti gravity technology available to the world of the 1920s. Um, yeah, uh, so it's kind of a mix of. Um, it's kind of a mix of like Hitler's secret weapons, uh, like uh, Hitler Antarctica base conspiracy theory, uh, Iron Harvest and Bioshock, and uh, they've added in a bunch of like uh, weird ass genetic shit plus like um, plus like I don't know chemical weapons uh, or whatever, and even something called Live Wire, which. Um, it's got a barbed wire, and it says live. I, I, I don't. I've I haven't seen it explained anywhere, but uh, it kind of sounds like it's supposed to be barbed wire that's like biological in some way. It, I'd assume. Anyway, um, basically, um, this is known as like the second Renaissance. So basically, um. Uh, basically the the idea of like wireless power generation for like weird ass technology and it leads to a completely different sort of uh, well not completely different it's uh, we'll get to that um when you know when i get to like elaborate my thoughts on the mod a little bit later obviously uh due to you know due to simplicity's sake uh it can't just be completely different from our uh, timeline's technological development, but it's, you know, interestingly different enough. Um, let's, actually, I'm gonna say it right away. Uh, I think they should, like, double down on this and, like, in future updates, like, really make the weird weird. And, like, yeah, even, yeah, there's even, like, weird-ass genetic engineering stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about the technology. Um, but, yeah, that's, um, that's kind of the thing. Um, that's kind of the thing that sets it apart from the other alternate history mods, because many of the other alternate history mods, and probably someone's gonna get pissed at me for saying this, but like a ton of alternate history mods, um, all the way from Apremale de Luge, like all those years ago in 2017 or 2018 when it, when it released or whatever, um, to me, they all just, they all were kind of the children. This is gonna be a kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, just theoretical analysis of uh, Hearts of Iron alternate history or whatever. Um, they've been, really been the brainchilds uh, of Kaiserreich from uh, from Hearts of Iron 2 and, and Darkest Hour. None have really tried to like shake up the formula of Kaiserreich too much, which is it's our world, but kind of different, right? Um with a lot of, you know, a world with a lot of parallels to our own. So in Kaiserreich, what you have is, instead of Germany losing World War One 
and uh, sort of developing a new radical ideology that takes over and, and tries to remake Europe and its image. It's France that loses World War One and develops a new radical ideology that tries to remake Europe and its image, blah, 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 right? Um, in, in our timeline, you have Russia that falls into a revolution uh, and, and, you know, uh, workers uprising or whatever the fuck. Um, while in the West, these worker uprisings are crushed. In Kaiserreich, the West, uh, Britain and France have socialist revolutions and it's crushed in Russia. Um, now, the thing is, even if you go into the, some of the weirder uh, mods like Red Flood or TNO, Kind of that same, kind of that same vibe and and sort of general archetypal structure remains the same. So, for instance, what you have in TNO is yes, it's a really kind of uncanny and complex and strange world, but fundamentally, it's a cold war, right? Instead of you know the United States and the Soviet Union win World War II and fight each other across the world with um, the potential of nuclear, annihil nuclear annihilation, um, you know, sort of being there uh, and uh, just creeping authoritarianism, blah, 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 blah. It's Germany uh, and Japan when World War II and, you know, yeah. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is there is no mod that's really like creatively like breaking the mold, right? And then Pax Britannica could be one of, could be like a candidate that like just completely just blows like the whole thing right up and, and innovates, right? Um, the idea of, okay, it's not just, it's, it's kind of a Guns of the South situation where like, uh, if you don't know, Guns of the South is like a novel where like the fucking confederacy gets like, like there's some fucking, like f some fucking fashy boys from South Africa go back in time and give the confederacy like, uh, you know, assault rifles or whatever the fuck. It's a stupid fucking, it's a stupid fucking like time travel slash alternate history novel by Harry Turtle Dove. But it's kind of this concept of like, you know, it's not just, politics that are different and you know states borders etc it's also the technology and uh and then all of that has repercussions now of course this is super fucking early in development and i'm not sure it's ever going to realize its sort of full potential but i really like the idea um part of why for example a mod like equestrian war or old world blues is so like appealing to me is that it's hearts of iron force gameplay but without the sort of vanilla hearts of iron uh, you know the sort of vanilla vanilla hearts of iron uh sort of gameplay setup being 100 percent uh sort of translated into the new mod right uh you have differences with Old World Blues, you have that it's, you know, transported into the Fallout world and you have power armors and, and shit. With Equestrian War, it's, you know, the ponies or whatever the fuck and magic and, you know, uh, nukes uh, that are magic and, you know, fucking... Yeah, you understand the point. Um, they shake up things. Um, this can shake up a lot of shit and it's potentially very interesting. Rant over. Um... Sorry for the accidental video essay on um, Hearts of Iron 4 mods. Basically, let's very, very quickly look at the world first, I suppose. Um, the borders and, and, you know, states and ideologies. And then we're going to look at uh, the free countries that have content. Very basic for now. Uh, like, lots of content, but, like, nothing really too out of the blue. Um, in terms of the actual, like, focus trees, that they don't seem to be particularly interesting. They are more like, they're more like the focus trees of, like, 2019 or early 2020 than, like, the modern, like, really cool Hoi 4 focus trees that have, like, hidden paths and, you know, fucking insane shit, um, that many mods are now employing, but, hey, whatever, uh, 
early development. Uh, and of course, we're going to look at the research and, uh, you know, kind of uh, new types of um, technologies and units. So basically, first of all, ideology is kind of the least interesting, actually. Um, if I were if I were the developers of this mod, in fact, I, I would have kind of like um, I would have kind of doubled down on this like idea of uh, a different type of technological development uh, and uh, made um, made more use of, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, like a radical technocratic per perhaps uh, type of fascism or more emphasis on fucking, I don't know, eugenics or something uh, type of ideology. Because, uh, okay, so the, basically the ideologies we have from far right to far left, we have the neo-imperialists uh, that are uh, sort of born in France. Uh, and it's just actually, no, uh, in France it's despotism. But yeah, basically neo-imperialists are in Russia, right? I forgot. Um, then you have despotism, like France, which is just basically, you know... Um, uh, ultra nationalism. It's basically, the, b both of these are ultra nationalists, except neo imperialists are more, uh, you know, kind of more radical. Um, yeah, basically, it appears like there's both a racial and non racial variety. Um, <laughs> it focuses on a xenophobic distrust of other races, seeking to eliminate them altogether rather than forcefully assimilate them. Of course. Uh, and yeah, of course, in the Russian Empire, it's uh, the Sayuz Ruskova Naroda, so the, the Union of Russian People, the Black Hundreds, which is a historical thing. Uh, when it comes to the Republic of France, it's a fictional, um, it's a fictional uh, party called the Front Populaire Française, which is just a revanchist kind of ultra-nationalist group, but... Um, they can actually, when we look at France, you, you'll see that they can actually turn into... Um, I believe this might be neo-imperialist, actually. Uh, ah, no, it's despotism. They can actually turn into Action Francaise, which is a real-life political um, party in France uh, that used to exist. Then you have uh, just reactionaries. Then you have anarcho-liberals. Of course, uh, Victoria, two moments. Conservatives, liberals, state socialists, and Jacobins. Now, state socialists are basically... Uh, kind of Bismarckian, um, yeah, kind of Bismarckian or Kautsky type social Democrats, uh, just, you know, trying to, like, trying to basically make a gigantic, uh, you know, state-controlled economy, um, and Jacobins, as far as I can see, are basically just kind of communists with more nationalism kind of thrown in um kind of seems like the french revolution is supposed to have failed in this timeline or kind of happened differently uh in, in a way uh so the sort of i don't know the sort of transition between republican revolution and um socialist revolution has kind of merged together, uh, like the the, def the definition of the two, kind of like an upper Mala deluge, actually, um, if you recall. Um, except uh, over there was border partist uh, France, and here it's it used to be Orleanist France or Orleanist France. Basically, um, all the main powers in Europe are still monarchies or some form of, um, except uh, of course for. Um, you know, except for Jacobin countries, basically. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, basically, you know, we've got a Hungarian Common Republic, Croatian Common Republic, and Hellenic Republic, and they're all uh, Jacobins, so I'm guessing that basically what's going on here is that uh, republicanism is kind of synonymous with um, communism in this type of t uh, timeline. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the ideologies. Let's take a look at where they're kind of positioned in the world and how the different countries are. Uh, simplest, I believe, would be North America to look at uh, due to the fact that the, this is like kind of like, well, America in general. This is the continent that's probably most changed from our timeline due to the non-existence of the United States, of course. Uh, but a lot of the sort of traits that... Um, a lot of the traits that drove America's development forward 
uh, seem to have been taken into account in making new political units out of um, out of America while, you know, accounting for the obvious differences, such as, for example, Alaska never being sold. Uh, it's called, of course, Novorossiya, which uh, can't help but think that that's kind of a, you know, uh, a reference to, I don't know, real life events or something. Uh, and it's a, it's kind of a funny country, it appears. Uh, prison state political melting pot with like fucking black sons and shit. They're Vasily Korsh. Uh, Born in 1899, this guy's pretty young. Uh, of course, we've got a ton of the content that's mostly controlled by uh, Britain, especially the United Commonwealth, which um, in a future release will have a nationalist uh, revolution to try to sort of overthrow the British and uh, perhaps establish a great American Republic or something. Uh, I have um, I have like the content roadmap open in my browser so we'll I'll, I'll you know I'll tell you about it later then there's another there's a couple other British colonies being of course the Commonwealth of Quebec uh, and, you know a couple of places controlled by Imperial Britain and the Northwest Territory Colonial Authority and Acadia or Acadia uh, which is a sort of a French um, French North America over here now um, this is obviously meant that no America obviously means no Canada and also no um, no American West, right? Um, so we have that the West is split between, I guess, non-developed or something. I don't know. Anarchy, whatever the fuck. Um, we have New Virginia, which I don't know, just whatever the fuck. Um, Confederacy of the Free Tribes, which kind of looks like a, you know, native type of stuff. Uh, New Zion here, uh, looks like a Mormon state in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, this is like what I think uh, could be called the funny triangle. We have the New Zion, the Union Standard Oil under Rockefeller, and uh, Fredonia with the come and take it flag. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call this the funny triangle. Then the Republic of Santa Fe, and the Republic of Tejas, and the Republic of the Rio Grande, and the Republic of California are uh, sort of the states that seceded out of the greater Mexican empire that of course survived due to no United States to come in and dismantle it uh, and, and eat a lot of it. Uh, basically, uh, in the lore, there was of course a great Northern sort of uprising of Northern republics against the yoke of Mexico City, much like there kind of was in the 1840s that led to the um, Mexican-American War breaking out uh, so quickly and easily. Now, Tejas, or Texas, of course, uh, like has um, Anglo problems and shit. Um, now, California is under Emiliano Zapata, so I'm guessing that over here there are over here there be Zapatistas, which is kind of epic, not gonna lie. Rio Grande, also a socialist uh, type of republic, appears, uh, as well as Yucatan and a few of the other um, few of the other places in Central America, like Los Altos, um, a few other Central American, you know, states, as you'd expect. There's a Nicaragua to canal uh, that's, I don't think it's finished, yeah. I don't think it's finished yet. Yeah, it's not finished yet at the time of, you know, the games, uh, at the time of the game starting. But it's kind of interesting that there is a Nicaragua canal and there is no Panama canal. So I don't know, just kind of another interesting thing. Like they just, they didn't make the Panama canal. I'm, I'm guessing due to the existence of Gran Colombia, perhaps. Um, but uh, they're making a Nicaragua canal, which is... Nice, you know, another another way in which this world is kind of different to our own, uh, and of course the Mexican Empire. Um, you know, it's 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 still the Mexican Empire, but it's a vestigial empire, and it's got constitutional issues, so it's likely to break out into sort of another civil war, and the neighboring states are going to be able to intervene in it, uh, and uh, try to make a greater sort of Mexican uh, state in their own image. Uh, South America, I don't know, there's there's Argentina, Brazil fell apart, it's still like Imperial Brazil. There's Sao Paulo Republic under a uh, funny integral man. Um, Greater Cisplatina, which is kind of cute. Paraguay, 
Just kind of there. Bolivia is big. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Bolivia is big and is, has a part of Peru. Peru is Peru. Uh, Ecuador is revolting against Gran Colombia, which has Venezuela plus Colombia plus Ecuador, but Ecuador is revolting away and it's revolutionary. Um, and there's a few other sort of breakaways, Bahia Republic, Equatorial Confederation. So that's America. Uh, Confederation of the Antilles and Hispaniola. Oh, really? Hispaniola. Elijah Fabrice. Huh. Capital Port-au-Prince. Kind of the flag of the first Haitian state. Interesting. Interesting there. Is that a epic Haiti? Haiti? I don't know. Um, looking at Africa, we see the big kind of thing is uh, the, the big fun kind of thing that's different is that there's a much bigger sort of German presence, of course, um, with big old Central Africa, big old British uh, colonization of West and East Africa in the north sort of northern half of the continent. And Egypt is, of course, a uh, sort of puppet of the British. Suez Canal is still there. Um, Palestine is British. The British are in Aden, as in real life. They also have Madagascar probably taken over from France. Uh, but, for instance, there's a few other, you know, the different things. Uh, for example, Portugal did the pink map and sort of took over everything. And uh, the Dutch still had, um, the Dutch still had South Africa, which is, you know, kind of split between straight up Dutch controlled and a few other sort of republics or whatever the fuck. Um, and colonies. And uh, what's kind of interesting about this Portugal is that this is a kingdom in exile because in Europe over there they had like a kind of fucking ultra insane religious uprising, I think. Uh, the divine kingdom of Portugal under Sister Lucia of Fatima. There's kind of like a thing of um, religious fundamentalism in the Iberian Peninsula, which we'll, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, Morocco and Tunisia. Well, Morocco's independent, sort of, I believe. Uh, but Tunisia is a puppet of the UK. Uh, in India, I'm not sure what's... I'm not sure why India is free. Because it's, you know, Pax Britannica, you know, India. But uh, we have the British administration of Bengal and Burma under Winston fucking Churchill. Certainly no genocide will come of it. Um, then we have a condominium of the Tamil kingdoms in the southeast of India. Um... But that's it for British India. Then the rest is split between the Marafa Confederacy and a couple of other kingdoms like the Hyderabad, you know, Madras, or sorry, Mysore, uh, Travancore, you know, just, just the usual stuff. The British never took uh, Ceylon from the Dutch, apparently. Punjab is there, and Kalat. Um, looking at the Middle East, it's mostly just... Uh, it's mostly just the Ottoman Empire being sort of dismembered in a different way from our timeline. Bulgaria is bigger. Uh, the Russians took Constantinople, I guess because for reasons, the Russian Revolution did not happen or happen differently, and Nikki II is still around, and uh, they're ultra-nationalists, and, you know, yeah. So they took Constantinople, um, and uh, they gave the rest to Bulgaria. The Ottoman Empire was dismembered into the Caucasus uh, vice royalty, Udianich over here, um, and the Ottoman, why is Ankara named Osman? I have no idea. The Ottomans are a client state of the Russians. Um, while Kurdistan broke free, and uh, we have the sort of, um, we have a type of uh, greater Arab state that's formed out of the Arab revolt. We have the uh, United Arab Emirates, Al Imarat Al Arabiya Al Mutadiya, a union of Arab states formed following their emancipation from the Ottoman Empire in 1925. The United Arab Emirates functions more like a confederation of nations akin to the, Holy, the former Holy Roman Empire. The emirs are de facto vassals of the emir of Mecca and Hejaz, but in practice they're given significant autonomy to tribal and due to tribal and dynastic rivalries. So basically, there's a bunch of Hashemites all over the place. Um, except for Jabal Shamar and Yemen. Uh, Yemen are Hamadra Dududududuti Mutawakalalites or whatever the fuck. Uh, whatever, I don't know. I just insulted all of Yemen. I'm sorry. Um, should be Mutawakalite Yemen or whatever the fuck. I don't know. The Imams of Yemen. Um, 
while uh, Jabal Shamar is, of course, Rashidi's. Uh, the rest is, you know, what you'd expect. Uh, they're Hashemites. Abdullah the first. We have Faisal with, you know, just a big old, big old greater Syria over here from Lebanon to Baghdad. Uh, and uh, the Emirate of Mashriq under Khazi the first. Uh, kind of a tiny Iraq, I suppose. Um, one major complaint I have with the mod is that uh, when you zoom in, when you zoom in, at least on desert terrain, it appears, uh, and you're in, um, and you're not in like political map mode, but in diplomatic map mode, it's super bright for reasons to me unknown. Uh, I do not know why there's a canal in Libya. Don't ask me what this is supposed to be. Really, just don't ask me what these lakes are supposed to be. New Alexandria. Another big lake. Leopoldville. Yeah, don't ask me why there's big lakes in the Sahara. It looks like someone tried to do a funny, like, making the Sahara green type of deal with some kind of, some kind of fucking weird-ass technology. Don't ask me. Oh, they widened the crime. They widened Crimea? Is this intentional? Probably. Of all the attention to detail that's going on. Let's actually try to... I didn't even realize a few of these map changes. I wonder if... I uh, wonder if elsewhere we've got other, you know... Got other changes like this to, like, the map. You know, some kind of terraforming that's going on. Doesn't really look like it. Oh, Hawaii! Hawaii is, ah, uh, it's the Little Kingdom of Hawaii. Interesting. I don't know, it doesn't look like there's, um... It doesn't really look like there's other, other terraforming nonsense going on. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, basically, that's it for Africa and the Middle East. That's it for India. Let's take a look at East Asia, and then we're gonna end it with Europe. Um, bunch of Dutch nonsense, and then, you know, yeah. Then, uh, Kalimantan and Malaysia are killing each other. For reasons. Uh, Borneo is actually still under the sort of white white Rajas. Brunei still a thing. Um, Viner. Bruh. Yeah. Um, then there's a big old British, um... Vietnam plus Malaysia thing, Ratanakosan Empire here. Uh, there's the Vietnamese are revolting against the British, which is extremely based. They're liberals though somehow. Um, the British have Taiwan, which is kind of funny. Uh, they also have something called the Pearl Lever Pearl River Dominion in Hong Kong and Macau. Mm, yes. Um, yeah, that's uh, we're gonna go to China in a little bit. Um, yeah, just a few weird-ass Dutch things over here. Uh, Commonwealth of Victoria is kind of like a... Kind of like a small... Like... I don't know, it's part of Australia, part of Papua New Guinea, and... Don't even know what the sign... Timor. Um, then there's German Pacific Commonwealth, which is Tasmania, a thing in Australia, and Northern New Guinea. Uh, under Donuts, and they also have the Philippines, but there's also a revolution in the Philippines under the Filipino insurrection and their Jacobins. So, as far as I can tell, uh, the actual lore is supposed to be that um, Australia was in parts colonized by the French, in parts colonized by the Dutch, and in parts colonized by the British. And the French part was taken over in part by Germany due to the war, uh, and some became the République d'Australie, which is. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. It's got... Yeah, it's French. They're Frenchies. Um, the Maori were never super colonized, it appears. I don't know. Um, yeah, just... I don't know. Dominion of Otoroa. Or Otoroa. Anyway... Uh, that's about it for uh, sort of the South uh, Pacific. When it comes to the uh, Central and North Pacific, we have um, kind of an interesting setup uh, in that there was a big old Japanese Empire thing. It 
probably tried to kill the Germans and it failed, and it kind of broke into a uh, revolutionary state, the Japanese Republic, and they're Jacobins, but they're also like ultra-nationalist and pan-Asianist. I'm sure that when uh, the focus tree for these guys is released, they're gonna be hell fun. Like, the lore for this is kind of interesting. So they're just radical nationalist, um, but also, you know, but also fucking uh, socialist regime that's gonna try to make pan-Asianism or whatever the fuck and, and kill white people, I guess, which is extremely based. Please continue doing this. Um, so I'm guessing they're gonna be kind of like, there's gonna be kind of a lot, a lot of Maoist vibes, except it's Japanese, so probably even worse. Um, there's also the Joseon Kingdom, of course, or Joseon Kingdom. Um, don't ask me, now, this plus the Empire of the Great Qing existing under Xuantong or Pui, um, don't ask me how the fuck these two states that should have fallen up, well, that in real life fell apart in the 1910s for very good reasons. Um, and were really falling apart earlier uh, as well. Don't ask me how the fuck they're still alive in 1933. I'm gonna go ahead and say fucking weird ass Tesla magic. Uh, I don't know, fucking insanity. Uh, China's still a semi-colony in that uh, this there's still sort of the uh, extraterritoriality uh, well, there was a nationalist China in real life as well, but like to a lesser extent. Um, there's still the extraterritoriality um, being granted to um, Westernoids. Um, plus, I'm guessing there's a ton of concessions all over the place to uh, colonial powers, agrarian economy, uh, regionalism, and fervor, revolutionary fervor. What I'm getting out of the vibes of the few things I've seen um, is that very, very quickly when there's actual development of the Empire of the Great Qing, um, what's going to happen is um, that there's going to be a uh, nationalist revolution and uh, most likely a warlord era developing very, very quickly for the Empire of the Great Qing that's going to fall apart pretty much instantly. Um, I'm not sure what there is in store for the Koreans, but I sure hope it's more interesting than just the Joseon Kingdom. Um, because, uh, yeah. And there's also, uh, also Persia's Persia. Forgot this, forgot to tell you. Persia is indeed Persia. Uh, although it's called the sublime state of Persia, but it's, it's Persia. And, and Oman is Oman. It's Muscat and Oman. It's just there. Abyssinia is just Abyssinia. It's just there. It's, it's a thing. Sagalo Cossack host Vyacheslav Naumienka Wasn't there a real life attempt to colonize Djibouti for Russia or something? Like I know there was for Hawaii and it's a hilarious story. Go fucking read about it. Uh, <laughs> there was a guy who tried to colonize Hawaii for the Russian Empire and it's hilarious. But there might have been for Djibouti as well. Anyway, it's it's Cossacks. Cossacks in, in Africa. What kind of horrible racial crimes will they commit? So we get to Russia, right? Um, Russia and then Europe. I guess we're going to just swing around. Um, Russia is just big Russia. It's just a big Russian empire. I guess they never annexed Congress Poland somehow for reasons. Don't ask me. Um, the independent state of Prussia is also guaranteed by the Russian Empire. Don't... Oh, I know why. So basically, the, the it's about the German lore. So we're going to talk about it when, when, we talk to about, when we talk about the German lore. Um, of course, Baltic governance um, under Anton Dienikin um, and Caucasus vice royalty under Nikolai Yudinich. So we got, you know, your nice fucking insane ass, like white army generals that you'd expect, plus uh, Russian military administration in Finland. Looks like they're fighting some Finnish guerrilla nonsense. Um, and uh, yeah, Congress Poland, and it's just Russian Empire Vicky II. So I guess they don't like, uh, they don't like Germany, they don't like Britain, they're neo-imperialists, they're the Black Hundredists, Black Hundredists, which were a extremist, um, 
sort of extreme uh, loyalist kind of pro pro czarist autocracy organization that was set up in the late Russian Empire to kind of form as a counterbalance against the revolutionary forces that were rising, especially in the you know in the lead up to 1905 and of course to uh, 1917, heavily pushed uh, by the imperial government and sort of the kind of first uh, promoters of kind of a populist uh, anti-Semitism as well in Europe when it comes to a actual organized political movement, along with Action Francaise that we're going to take a look at in a little bit. Um, in fact, it is the Union of Russian People of the Black Hundreds were very similar to Action Francaise in France, except uh, in France they were, you know, not an institutional uh, party, being that it was the French Republic. Um, both sort of ultra-nationalist monarchist movements, uh, you know, sort of very uh, very anti-Semitic, blah, 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 proto-fascist type deal. Um, aftermath of the nationalist revolts, looks like, uh, you know, Prussians, Poles, Finnish, Balts, and Caucasians uh, revolted and blah, 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 blah. The Jews are being uh, fucking, yeah, I mean, the, the Jews are being Jewed, of course, you, you'd expect, you know, uh, fucking Russian Empire moment. Political violence, as you'd expect. Scourge of the motherland. No idea what the fuck that is supposed to be, but it looks kind of fashy, you know. It's just what you'd expect the fucking Russian Empire to, to continue being, if it, if it had continued to exist. Um, you know, ultra-autocratic, uh, near-fascist hellhole. Um, so that's the Russian Empire. It's fun, uh, it's big, it's probably pretty strong, but it's probably going to explode <laughs> once there's content for it. Um, they also uh, kind of puppet um, Mughalistan, which is kind of just an old name for like Northern Afghanistan, plus like some parts of Central Asia. And it's just, yeah, it's uh, Mohammed Nadir Shah. So, you know, it's basically just Afghanistan. Um, so that's Russia. Uh, the other big uh, land powers in Europe are, of course, France and Germany. When it comes to Germany, uh, Germany is the United Kingdoms of Germany. And actually, this is uh, a sort of direct descendant of the Holy Roman Empire. And it's uh, under a Habsburg kind of monarchy. So actually, um, but its capital is in Frankfurt, which kind of tells me it's like supposed to be the Frankfurt diet kind of deal. So it's kind of a throw over to the um to the german confederation of 1820 now i don't know how in the lore the napoleonic wars and shit is supposed to turn out let's take a look at germany because it gives me this nice little lore write-up um so basically uh there was a franco-german war in the late 1700s they lost uh the french reformation and a bunch of liberal revolutions blah 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 the Habsburgs are like oh no um so instead of instead of basically uh instead of uh, looking towards creating a multinational empire in northern Italy and the Balkans the Habsburgs basically just I don't know do a U4 player and start to like eat German states um, and the reason why Prussia is this weird independent state of Prussia is that uh, instead of just letting Prussia do its own thing in North Germany, the Austrians and the Russians team up against Prussia and destroy it. Um, which leads to the Austrians kind of being hegemonic over, uh, you know, Germany, but also a big chunk of like Poland and, and Prussia being sort of under Russian influence. Uh, then uh, there was a big war between uh, sort of this German confederation, sort of this, yeah, this, this Holy Roman Empire that was becoming a German confederation, um, and France. Uh, I don't know when, when, like, the Holy Roman Empire is, like, literally, like, officially dissolved, but basically it's replaced by a, um, a German federation that's called the Dinneric Federation and uh, a new Ausgleich treaty results in like the separation of Hungary, 
uh, to sort of better integrate the German parts of this new German Empire. Uh, then the Great War happens, blah blah blah, and it's yeah, and it's the United Kingdoms of Germany, basically. Um, interesting, kind of an interesting thing. If you go into decisions, you even see that there's like uh, constitutional kingdoms over here. It's kind of like a reformed um, Holy Roman Empire, in that uh, there's still like a lot of kings and you know fucking dukes and princes in, in here and they've still got like feudal privileges and shit so it's kind of like the german empire in that way um except it's got probably more autonomy than the actual german empire to uh you know the single regions and they're called the, the bigger like unions of these places are called Volkstaats. there's hanover brandenburg saxony frankfurt rhineland alsace uh, lorraine and uh, Bavaria and big Austria, you know, with uh, the Czechs and shit. Uh, so that's kind of the thing there. Um, Germany, this this kind of like gross, this kind of like not super gross, but pretty gross. Germaniums is obviously very dominant in Europe and it's just annihilated France. But uh, this also means that like, since the Habsburgs are not as involved in like the Balkans and shit, uh, the Balkans are kind of, you know, a little bit less insane than uh, than real life. They're kind of just their own thing, you know. It's kind of a big old, big Bulgaria, big Romania. Well, not that big, but decently big Romania. Big Hungary, that's also communist. Uh, big Croatia, that's also communist. Ivan Ribar. Uh, big Serbia, Albania, Greece. You know, just generally what you'd expect. Um, Italy is uh, was united by the two Sicilies for reasons to me unknown, and uh, they're in real bad shape. There's also a civil war uh, that's sort of winding down, I suppose. They're, they're losing, the, the revolt is losing, and the revolt is the Italian Social Revolutionary Front. They're neo-imperialist under Gabriele D'Annunzio. Let's not talk about Gabriele D'Annunzio because otherwise this video will be seven hours. Um, there's the Netherlands. And Wallonia is separate. I don't think because it got separated by the Netherlands. I think it's because it got separated from the French. Because the French were supposed to be this gigantic... Um, this gigantic, like, mega empire, right? Um, before the war, before the Great War. Basically, the Bourbon dynasty once ruled from the shores of Iberia to the swamps of Venezia and beyond. So I'm guessing that basically... Um, like Northern Italy, uh, well, actually, this this is a Bourbon dynasty, so perhaps it was like a big old dynastic alliance of, you know, the kingdoms of Spain, France, and Italy, but basically it was mostly the mostly sort of more centralized under the French Empire than it was in real life. It was just in real life, this was just the same dynasty ruling over different countries, but in this timeline, it was actually more like a you know. Big old France, you know. So that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically Italy has its own problems. Spain is completely fucked due to, I believe, in law reasons. It's because it was one of the main fronts of the war where basically the British tried to invade and fuck up France. And it's just, it's just not good. Like, Russia and TNO, more like Spain and, and Pax Britannica. It's it's the place where bad shit is happening, basically. Um, yeah, and there's like this sort of gigantic, uh, gigantic uh, religious fundamentalist uh, sort of. Yeah, the, the politics of the region is dominated by religious fundamentalism, and it's not not good. You know, Div divine kingdom of Portugal, messianic, fucking ultra catholic hitler mode and the holy order of spain not messianic but near fascist still ultra catholic whatever the fuck um basically it's the holy order but it's actually more like the holy orders and that as it says it's a coalition of military warlords ultra nationalists and monarchists with the veneer of catholic fundamentalism so basically uh they're kind of like all larping as crusaders and knights but Basically, um, they're probably all going to start to kill each other at some point. Um, so that's... Plus, the Basque Republic is independent, of course. So basically, this is the dismantlement of the Giga French Empire. There's also, of course, Brittany. 
But if we look at France itself, uh, you have that it was um, dismantled under the Treaty of Tours. And so basically uh, what's going on is uh, they have a sort of revanchist, uh, revanchist uh, government, Pact Revanchiste, and uh, it's under Jacques Doria, you know, blah, 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 blah. Let's look at the focus trees. Uh, so basically, the French one kind of looks like the most interesting in that they've even got something kind of funny. Uh, because they, they have a rivalry between the military and the Sécurité Publique. So the military is, you know, the military and the Sécurité Publique is kind of like the SS. And it uh, looks like they can take over and... Um, yeah, they can take over, they can assassinate Torrio. They can even have Gabriel Chanel as the country leader, which is kind of funny. Or, you know, some of these other people that I do not know. Um... The military can have a person I do not know, Claire Chenault. Was that not? I have no idea who Claire Chenault is, but the name reminds me of something. Or Maxime Weygand. I know who Maxime Weygand is. I don't know who the other people are. Um, yeah, uh, and then, yeah, the, the, the SP can do Burgundy, I guess. I don't know. Introduce esotericism, of course. Not at a truncheon moment. Yeah, you know, just l'état fantôme. Just whatever the fuck, you know. They're gonna do they're gonna do funny. Uh while the military will do less funny. Um Or they can you know, if they don't like get too much power within these organizations that I believe the way you I believe the way you um the way you influence that is through uh Decisions somewhere. Yeah, the SP or whatever fuck. Um, Inter-service rivalry nonsense. And uh, these uh, party doctrine type of things. Um, if you don't want to do those, you can still do just the regular political tree where basically Dorio is trying to maintain control over the, you know, popular front. Uh, if he does, he does like a kind of fashy type of nonsense. Ané zéro, whatever the fuck, killed the free old degenerate things. Um, just do orthodox revanchism. Or, um, or the uh, Action Française, which are again these uh, ultra-monarchist uh, kind of proto-fascists uh, of France. They can take over and reinstate the, the Bourbon dynasty and, you know, try to sort of restore the French Empire. Um, so, you know, kind of similar, but less fashy, more more monarchist. Yeah. Plus a bit of anti-Semitism thrown in there just for the funnies. Or just Nazbol, you know, just just a standard old Nazbol thing, um, which is the new French synthesis. And that is um, Inessa Armand, so basically, social nationalists. Nationalism without capitalism and socialism without internationalism, fucking third positionism, blah, 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 blah. You get the deal, you know, national syndicalism, nonsense. Armand de Sorelianism. Yeah, Sorelians. You know, because it's fucking George Sorel. A revolutionary against the revolution. Blah, 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 blah. You know, as, as you'd expect, basically. It's just... Whatever the, whatever the bloody hell is going on here. Um, yeah, then there's a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of, like, of course... Cute-ass uh, economy trees. Dig sites. I don't know. Industry never stops. Economic health. Just You can integrate portions of uh, areas. The Autometro. Very cool. Not gonna lie. Very cool. Invest in cities, blah, blah, blah. All roads lead to Paris, etc. Uh, you know, military trees. And if you um, if you win and you defeat Germany and you defeat Britain, or a peace with honor has been signed with Britain, what you can do is you can do a bunch of like collaborationist um, regimes all across Europe. Um,
there's even a like desperation tree i believe yeah like the more surrender progress you have the more like the more bad things get or something like the, the more the more funny things you can do which is something i really enjoy like there's a very dark tone to this mod blah 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 you know blah, blah, blah. you'll see when we get to the technology screen with like the biological weapons and shit um you really get the feeling that this world is like total war blah 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 um and you know uh i really do enjoy the idea of like a focus tree that's just that's just entirely dedicates a part of it to like what happens when the nation is like losing further and further which is yeah i mean i hate the germans i hate the british i hate the italians victory shall come friends shall survive friends must survive we just have to defeat them all kill kill them all okay so we have the schizo moment uh yeah basically just the schizo tree redoubt plan savoy <laughs> So if you're not in full control of Ile de France, and I suppose if you're over 60% surrender progress, uh, you've taken the previous ones, he stands alone. Yeah, just move the capital to Savoy and just create land forts, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's time for, it's time for Le Schizo. It's time for Le Schizophrenia moment. Uh, basically, if instead you win, uh, you make like a kind of fashy Europe with collaborationist regimes all over the place, and you get to redraw the map, which is kind of cool. Like, you get to like actually like, you know, in different steps, redraw the map through the focus tree, and then kind of uh, take the damn islands. Uh, and yeah, at the end, uh, you get to do yeah, you get to do it for uh, Britain, Germany. Italy and Scandinavia, which is kind of nice. So, what you can do is you can. Uh, hmm. You can uh, kind of do a puppet Scotland or a free Scotland. You can do a <laughs> De Gaulle garrison in, in Cornwall, which is kind of funny, not gonna lie. Or a collaborationist regime. You can do. Keep the Griffiths close or ally with. Huge's click. Interesting. Um, you can do a thing for Wales. So that's Albion. When it comes to Germany, Lippert's Junta will do just fine. So a small click of German officers loyal to the French cause has gained a lot of influence in Anton Drexler. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, they're just literally putting in fucking straight up fucking uh, fascists and shit. It's kind of funny. Um, so either a junta or <laughs> Alfred Rosenberg. Hell yeah. <laughs> Rosenberg has been one of the few Germans to receive the honorary status of French in blood. <laughs> Damn. Alfred Rosenberg. Unreal. Not a problem anymore. Enact a non aggression pact with Alemania. Very interesting. Helvetica. Yeah, whatever the fuck. Italy. The Piedmont Conference. Very interesting. Very interesting. You can give Italy Malta. Transfer the outer Venetian states, everything but Tyrol. Yeah, so it looks like Italy is a kind of a more equal collaboration. Plus, you can do insane shit to um, you can do insane shit to Scandinavia as well. So that's uh, that's France. It's kind of schizo, kind of funny. Yeah, they 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 banned a bunch of parties. It appears cute. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of like economic uh, fucking laws and shit that's not particularly interesting so we're not going to take a look at it because i'm already uh running uh, way too long on the runtime of this video when it comes to the german focus tree though let's take a look at that one it's actually compared to the french one quite a bit less interesting 
to be completely honest. Uh, France is like funny schizo ass fashy boys. Uh, Germany, there there is a kind of interesting thing in that. Uh, actually, let's go back to France and, and show you what the developers want you to think about it. So with France, you can conquer Europe and proclaim a new hegemony. You can balance the needs of the military and the Sécurité publique. You can industrialize France's major cities into metropolises. You can direct the Pacte Revanchiste towards your ideal Europe. Balance France's political factionalism. Deal with the unemployment crisis and fuel the people's wants for war. Uh, so that's basically, uh, yeah, that's the French thing. With the United Kingdom of Germany, you can unite Europa under one banner. Yeah? <laughs> Manage the state of the German Federation. Continue to fight in exile. So if you, you know, if Germany dies, uh, unlike France, that is just France, they can retreat to their colonial empire. Maintain Germany's vast empire, become a continental European hegemon, or set Germany on a path of economic progress. So the thing is... Um, when it comes to Germany, what's kind of um, what's kind of hilarious is that if they win, they basically uh, do pan Europa. They just do pan Europa. So yeah, they're gonna just annex Burgundy, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Poland, Wallonia, and the Netherlands. So yeah, they're just gonna do that. Overseas territories will be reformed into European mandates, and the proclamation of Europa will happen. All right, just, just straight up that. Just gonna, just gonna make the European, like, empire. Just you know, interesting. So that's uh, that's Germany, pretty much. Um, there's of course a lot of Nazis all over the place. Speaking of Nazis, let's talk about the politics. Uh, you can be a socialist Nazi, you can be a liberal Nazi, or you can be a Nazi Nazi. Um, now, the socialist Nazis are there because uh, the Rupert the, uh, Rudolf II, who is the Kaiser at the beginning, is going to abdicate in favor of um, Elizabeth. I don't know. Some fucking inbred ass Habsburg fucking nonsense. That's going to trigger elections and uh, maybe the socialists win. But it's actually, it's not the Jacobin socialists, it's the state socialists. So the state socialists, when it comes to them, um, is that uh, they're gonna do monarcho socialism or whatever, for, you know, blah 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 blah. They're gonna try to do, make uh, basically social democracy under the German Empire, and they're going to reform the German em or the United Kingdoms of Germany into the German Federation, basically centralizing while um, sort of rationalizing the union, making equality among the states, and abolishing sort of the, feud the feudal elements of the empire. Um, so that's that uh, for the Red Diarchy. Um, now, the liberal Nazis are liberals, and they're going to continue the present course, basically uh, trying to uh, improve the current situation, the current system. And uh, it's not really particularly too interesting. It's just, it's just there. Uh, ah, they're gonna, they're gonna protect the Jews. That's nice. Um, and the Nazi Nazis are gonna, are gonna do a Nazi Nazi. They're gonna get rid of Elizabeth because apparently she's a commie or something. I don't know. Um, and they're gonna be, there's gonna be a new Kaiser and a new, you know, a new sort of military regime. And uh, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna. It's basically just gonna become um, the real life German Empire. And in fact, the United Kingdoms of Germany will now be known as the German Reich. The capital of the new Germany will rightfully be, be Vienna. So I guess it's kind of, you know, more more Austrian um, chauvinist or whatever the fuck. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna do, uh, you know, war and then, you know, fucking say that everything is degenerate. So yeah, they're gonna do Nazi Nazi uh, national Nazism. Um, yeah, that's that's Germany. I mean, they've also they've also got a colonial tree where they can do things with their colonies, blah blah blah, uh, or uh, a tree for them in exile. Last but not least, we have uh, the namesakes, the Imperial Britain. Eng, I'm guessing. 
Is the tag? Yeah, there we go. Imperial Britain is uh, maintained vast, uh, Britain's vast empire, guided Westminster through the 20th century, crushed a Frankish foe, deal with the London market crash, and continued the Pax Britannica. Uh, as you'd expect, it's m possibly one of the least interesting due to, you know, the fact that there's still already, you know, a gigantic... Um, there's, still a there's already a gigantic British Empire, so a lot of it is about managing that. Looks like you can do a monarchist uh, restoration or something. The Edwardian restoration. Damn. Um, 1934 Imperial Congress. That's gonna happen in one year, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, you can do you can do um, you can do imperial stuff. Obviously, really cool. If you can hmm, pursue further centralization for the Imperial Confederation, perhaps do the Imperial Federation. Hmm, this would be kind of Interesting. Forming the Indian Commonwealth. Interesting. Reinforce the Pearl Liver. Reconcile with Japan. Interesting. Yeah, you can do a, you can do a lot of stuff uh, with the colonies, of course. British economy, as you'd expect. When it comes to the general elections, of course, you can choose between libs. Kind of commie kind of deal. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Or the National People's Party. Of course, kind of fashy type of deal. They're reactionary, so they're not like uh, neo-imperialist or, um, or despotic. So it's just, it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of British fascism. The Mental Hygiene Act. Yeah, it looks like we're going to do a bit of a bit of a eugenics. Um, promote the new British man, expose the socialist plot, a tr the, the National Security Act. Okay, of course. Anyway, the Tories, our Tories, or maybe the Whigs. Yeah, they're just they're just kind of that. Um, the Workers' Union Party uh, has a um, Jacobin faction and a state socialist faction, I believe. Right. Oh no, it's actually both state socialists, never mind. Um, but there, there's a more sort of radical faction and a least radical faction, so a hardliners and a, and a moderates. So um, the moderates are under Adelie and uh, they're gonna build the New Jerusalem or whatever the fuck. Uh, the hardliners are under Comrade Pollitt. And um, don't worry comrades, we will break the capitalist system which oppresses the proletariat of Britannia. The moderates first out in the party heading down a path of radicalism, the red eminence. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to result in like a British uh, republic. So that's that. Um, Align with the Bakuninists. Oh no. Bakuninists. Wait, are they going to... The fall of the right... Red right hand. Kind of looks like they're... Kind of looks like they're Trotskying uh, Oswald Mosley there. Which is kind of funny. The silent coup. Interesting. Very interesting. Mosley's cult of progress. Yeah, I mean, looks like the British socialists are kind of funny. Uh, but not... Okay, 1947 in action. Keep the red flag flying here. Taking the white gloves off, oh, based. Seizing our opportunity, based. WP radicals. God save the Republic. And more importantly, God save Pollitt. Okay, this will ban the Neo Imperialist Party. This will ban the Despotist Party. This will ban the Reactionary Party. Imperial Britain will now be known as the United Republic. Incredibly based, ultra mega based. Yes, amazing, fantastic, I love it. War Powers Act, yes, yes. Ultra based, amazingly based. Giga based indeed. Okay, so that's, uh, okay. Anyway, if you do conservatives, you do conservatives. And if you do the reactionaries, Britain lives and marches on. After the 1947 election, you can even do the democratic mandate. 
or invoke the National Security Act and do it happened here. So I'm guessing uh, turning uh, Britain fascist. The Cult of the Iron Lady. Oh, is that the is that the British fascisti lady? Yeah, that is the British fascisti lady. Oh, let's not fucking get into that. Fucking whatever the fuck. Um, an organic national state. Okay. The defender of Western civil. So they turn from like just proud boys into Nazis or or maybe stay. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. Um, British military. Britain forever. The atomic bomb. Secure Russian stability. Oh, the League of Nations. Interesting. Oh, that's if you've defeated uh, France and Russia in the Second Great War. I see. Um, an equal America, the Richmond Compromise. Interesting. A United Borealia. Oh, so that's going to be the Canada type of deal. Um, it's called Borealia, which is a really cool name, not going to lie. It's like a, the opposite of Australia. Um, a federated Oceania. The Oriental Crisis with a big old eyeball looking at Japan. Pan Asian Revolutions. Interesting. Really cool. Keynesianism. Okay. That's it for the focus trees. Let's look at the last cool thing, which is the research. Uh, infantry equipment. Kind of looking a bit too futuristic for the 1930s, but that's par for the course when it comes to the sort of weird-ass technologies that are going on. Um, but it's just infantry equipment. Support equipment is just support equipment. It, what's really sad is that this deep, like, ultra-cool diesel punk technology world doesn't have more cool-ass armored trains. More cool-ass armored trains! Fucking get on it. Uh, armor is just armor. Uh, they're called land ships, though, which is kind of cute. Nice name. Um, then there's the automats, which are like the, the, the mech things. Um, there's a duopod, a tripod, and a quadrupod. So, you know, light, medium, and heavy. Um, from what I've seen from the stats compared to the tanks, they're like definitely overpowered. <laughs> like, they, they appear to be much stronger than the tanks. But, uh, I mean, again, I haven't played with it. So, really cool idea. Um... Needs to like be in like expanded upon so that it's not just tanks. In my opinion, it should either replace tanks or be different enough from tanks that warrants it being different. Because as it is, it's kind of it's kind of looking like they're basically tanks, um, except they don't use the um, they don't use the designer like the no step back tank designer for the tripods um, or the automats, as you can see. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, they could probably add a uh, cool ass, uh, you know, design your own automat type of deal. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, like ki kind of, um, a couple of kind of, um, Super infantry, I guess. That being the heart suits and the razor maidens. Uh, razor maidens, as the name says, are, are women or whatever. Um, and they're apparently genetically engineered fucking super soldiers or whatever the fuck. Don't. I like the transhumanism aspect. I'm a sucker for that shit. It's really cool. Hope they they fucking. As it is right now, it's just it's just bonuses uh, to a different unit type. Hopefully, it's going to be fleshed out uh, because it's a really cool idea. Um, but yeah, basically, they're just... Yeah, yeah. Uh, or the hard suits, which are just, you know, they're like smaller versions of the of the automat. Uh, there's just... Yeah, it's just exoskeletons, basically. Um, there's even uh, something called the combat amalgamates, which is kind of... Reminds me of an old game called um, Impossible Creatures, which I never played, but I watched a playthrough of, and it's really cool. It's, it was Relic's first sort of real-time strategy game, where basically you create, like, with genetic engineering, you create weird-ass, like, biological, like, monsters that fight each other, you know? Um, yeah, it's just... You know? Just the stuff of nightmares over here. Um... Basically, just, yeah, kind of biological fucking shock troop kind of type of deal. Um, 
air is, as I, as you saw earlier, it's the, <laughs> it's the UFOs versus fighters versus, you know, fucking zeppelins and shit. Um, there's even helicopters. Apparently drones. Interesting. Um... Then there's electronics and industry. Now, I love that, like, all these things, it's like, oh, the land things has the autom automats and, you know, the genetic engineering infantry uh, and the, the, like, fucking, I don't know, the, the insane monster-ass uh, animals. The air has fucking UFOs, you know, and uh, anti-gravity nonsense. Um... Electronics, as you'll see, has, like, insane shit as well. But ships are just ships. Which is not something I'm a particularly great fan of, because I'm a fan of ships, and I would love for there to be cool-ass weird ships. Um, again, not gonna say that the mod is bad just because of this, but it's... It's kind of sad, you know? Make cool ships! Make, like, fucking weird submarines. I don't know. So submarine air... Fucking... Submarine aircraft carriers. Uh, fucking... I don't know. Uh, flying aircraft carriers? Would that, be, would that even make sense to be in the naval tree? But yeah, flying aircraft carriers would be cool because you've got fucking UFOs and shit. you got Zeppelins. Just make uh, flying aircraft carriers. Um, fucking, I don't know. Um, just small... Yeah, just make small, um, build, buildable small boats that are actually, like, super fast because of, like, weird-ass sci-fi engines, you know? Um, and are, like, really difficult to hit, but, like, small and cheap, um, but they're gonna die, you know? Make big-ass weird combinations of battleships, you know, new battleship modules, I don't know. Yeah, just go nuts with ships. I don't know. Ships are cool. Fucking ships. I like ships. Why do Why does only Millennium Dawn make do cool things with ships? I don't know. Uh, electronics. Electronics though also has terror weapons, which is not really electronics, but yeah. The electronics part is just the average, the, the 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 previous electronics things. But there's also terror weapons, which is basically uh, chemical weapons and uh, biological weapons and the live wire, whatever the fuck the live wire is supposed to be. You can deploy these. Like, there's a ton of different kinds. Uh, there's the schizo bomb. <laughs> Literally, it's the schizo bomb. Um, paranoia bombs can now be deployed. So, schizo bombs! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Makes everyone go schizo in a region. Melter bombs, which kind of just looks like a, like a kind of napalm or thermobaric kind of agent type of deal. Uh, I think this is uh, not supposed to be melter bombs again, but like a kind of, I don't know, other type of schizo bomb uh, that kills people. So this, this, this kills people. This kills uh, factories, this kills, you know, organ supplies and, you know, sabotage, intelligence. Then, uh, then you have the biological weapons, where you have anthrax, you have smallpox, you have botulism, which I'm not sure what that is and I do not want to know. That's, that's not fucking, I don't know, that's... I I don't need I don't need this nonsense in my brain <laughs> and influenza. Okay, let's let's not let's not think about this. It's it's scary. That's not it's not giving me the nightmares or whatever. Anyway, you can deploy it with uh, the nukes button. Uh, except it's not only the nukes; it's also the chemical weapons, the biological weapons, and I'm guessing the barbed wire, <laughs> the weird ass like insane horror barbed wire. I don't know. Um, that's it. Uh, there's even some new buildings. Fucking Tesla Tower. Pretty cool. Uh, research campus. Medical facilities. Um, synthetic mineral fabricator. Agroponics complex, which is just, you know, they added food resources. 
Um, nuclear reactor, rocket site, synthetic refinery, as you'd expect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you've, see, you've seen these. A few of these are the same. A few of these are different. Yep, that's, uh, that's about it for the mod. Lots of cool shit. Needs a lot of work. Like, a lot, a lot of work. Because at the moment, it's probably not too interesting to play through. Uh, but, um, you know, um, you can, you can drop schizo bombs on schizo France and make them go schizo. It's a, truly a mod for, <laughs> truly a mod for the wild 20s of the 21st century. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you soon.